Welcome to the Lake House and Healthy Cooking. And today we're going to talk about food allergies. And uh, it affects a lot of people. And if you're cooking, uh, sometimes you're cooking for large groups, sometimes it's good to play a safe dish, a dish that will kind of please lots of people. Now there's eight food allergies that we're concerned about. And the eight food gel allergies is, first of course, is peanuts. We know that a lot of people are allergic to peanuts, so we always kind of avoid peanuts when we're cooking for lots of people. And, and, and actually, a peanut is a legume, so it grows underground. It's not a nut at all. But that's the first main, one of the main eight allergies that we have. Number two is going to be tree nuts. Tree nuts, so uh, there's all kinds of different tree nuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, almonds, pecans, macadamia, brazil nuts, they're all tree nuts. So there's actually quite a few seeds too. A lot of people are allergic to tree nuts. So you stay away uh, from a dish, maybe you're making a dessert, stay away from putting any kind of nuts in there, almonds, pecans, things like that. They're very, very popular on desserts. Uh, the next part would be milk. Now a lot of people are allergic to milk, which is actually, um, it's, it's actually quite a serious um, allergy because what happens, it'll, uh, it, it, it causes the body to react um, and it's the immune system uh, that gets into trouble. And so that's a serious allergy. It's not, uh, it's not lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant will make you bloated, give you gas, maybe give you diarrhea, things like that. Um, it's, it's actually being allergic to the protein in milk and that's a serious allergy. Another one is eggs and generally speaking it's a protein in the egg whites. So that's another allergy. So if you, if, if you look at that, very hard to stay away from all these ingredients that I've said. You know, you've got nuts, you've got eggs, you've got milk. It cuts out a lot of things that you can cook with. So especially when you come to desserts, there's all kinds of things you can do with milk, cream, but somebody could be allergic to milk, milk products, and could also be, which is different, lactose intolerant. Uh, the next one is being allergic to wheat. Now, being allergic to wheat, again, is a serious problem. It's, it's an allergy, and generally speaking, you're looking at rye, wheat, and barley that you're allergic to. So, if you're allergic to it, then obviously you have to cut those uh, right out. It affects the immune system. And again, it's, very ser it's a very serious allergy. Now, when you're gluten intolerant, also, don't want to downplay it, but not quite as serious as an allergy is a gluten intolerance. Now, when you're gluten intolerant, it's really the digestive system that's uh, the problem. So, either case, if you have an intolerance or an allergy to wheat, barley, or rye, what you tend to do is just cut them right out of your diet. So now you can see uh, that there's a, you're trying to please a lot of people, so you're cutting out a lot of things, trying to play it safe. And if you, have a, if you are gluten intolerant or wheat intolerant, uh, you can go with things like rice, oatmeal, corn, those type of things are all gluten free. So you can make things from those and you can go to the supermarket, they have a t an entire section on gluten free products. So don't be scared to buy some of those products if you've got a, a large crowd coming over if you want to play it, play it safe. Next, uh, the next one is soy or soybean. Uh, again, this is a legume. Um, it's not a, really a bean. Uh, for, um, the traditional type, it's more of a, uh, a, a legume. And uh, just so you know, it's, um, it, it, it's not really related to other legumes, but people are, are very allergic to soy. So if you've got soy milk, uh, any kind of tofu, if you're vegetarian and you're allergic to soy, then it, it could be very serious because you get lots of protein from soy. Then you're looking at things like um, fish. So generally speaking, uh, your big culprits on fish would be things like salmon, tuna, halibut. Um, and if you're allergic to fish, and that is a serious allergy, then generally what we do is we cut fish out of the diet altogether. But there could be some main culprits in there, but we tend to cut all fish out just to be on the safe side. Uh, the, next, the next one is shellfish. And you probably know about this, lots of people 
are allergic to different shellfish. There's two different types of shellfish. There's crustaceans and there's mollusks. Now a crustacean is anything with, that you see that it's got the little claws and the segmented body. Things like crab, lobster, shrimp, they're all crustaceans. And generally speaking, that's the most serious and that's what the mo most people are allergic to when it comes to that particular allergy. Uh, mollusks tend to be things like clams, oysters, uh, th things of that nature with a hinge, anything with a hinge cell shell would be classed as a, a mollusk. So crustaceans would be your biggest issue when it comes to um, being allergic would be things like shrimp, lobster and even crab and so what we tend to do is stay away from all shellfish altogether. Sometimes we don't go into even mollusks, things like oysters, clams, mussels, things like that. They all have a hinge shell. So what I'm going to do today is give you one safe dish. One safe dish, um, generally speaking, vegetables are always good. If you're a vegetarian, this is a great dish. If you know that you're cooking for a, a, a lots of different people, and you don't want anybody to get sick or you want to play it very, very safe, this is also a good tip. I'm making a squash ratatouille. Now a squash ratatouille is, is very easy to make. And if a ratatouille traditionally comes from the Mediterranean. And if you look at the Mediterranean diet, that's not a fad diet. The Mediterranean diet has been going on for uh, hundreds of years and that diet, particular diet has been successful in the Mediterranean area. So in Italy and, uh, and different areas around the uh, Italian coast. And you'll see that that Mediterranean diet, even in Spain, they have the Mediterranean diet. You'll see in south of France, that particular diet, people have been living much longer than they should and it's not really a low fat diet as such. They tend to use lots of olive oil, but they use the right kind of oil and they use lots of fish, vegetables. We're not using fish today, but they use lots of vegetables and they make some tasty dishes. So a ratatouille traditionally is a kind of a Mediterranean stew with eggplant, zucchini, uh, tomatoes, garlic, onions, peppers, and you just kind of simmer it away. It all breaks down lots and lots of flavor. And what I do is I'll take a sweet potato, I'll bake a sweet potato, just put it on a baking sheet, uh, prick it with, some, uh, with a fork, let it bake, cut it in half, and then I scoop it out and I'll put the ratatouille right into the sweet potato. The sweet potato is a very healthy uh, choice as well. So, better than your regular starchy potato anyway is the sweet potato. So, let's take a look at how we're going to make this dish. This dish is really, to start with, is just the base that we always use, which is going to be um, onions and garlic. So we're going to just finally dice a little bit of onion. Now I'm going to heat my pan up a little bit before I get the onions ready, turn it on its side, cut it once, cut it twice, and I've got a nice fine uh, diced onion. Now, a lot of people like ratatouille, they like to put nice big pieces of onion in. So they'll actually take an onion, cut out the root, the root has a little bit of bitterness in, and plus the onion will fall apart if you remove that, and cut it into pieces. So some people like nice big pieces of onion in there. We'll use both today, because I've, I've prepped them both. We're gonna take a little bit of fresh garlic. Now, if you don't have fresh garlic, obviously, you can season it a little bit later with um, a little bit of dry garlic. Just crush that down. This is gonna go in. So this really is gonna have lots and lots of flavor. You shouldn't need, if you use the seasonings at the end, you shouldn't use a lot of salt, uh, very little salt in this. And we've said before that big killers in Canada are the ones that cause the most issues that kill Canadians, fat, sugar, salt. So what we're gonna do is put a little touch of olive oil, probably about a tablespoon of olive oil, we don't need too much, because this is going to eventually cook in its own juices. Just gonna put the onions in, I'm gonna put them all together, because it's just gonna be a low heat until they're soft enough. In this particular case, you can use any kind of squash, but the squash I've got right here is and uh, butternut squash, I don't know if you ever used butternut squash before, but it's beautiful, it's delicious. 
and also acorn squash. And acorn squash is delicious as well. So, but you could use any kind of different squash that you want. I'm using butternut and acorn. You could just use one of them or, or different types of them. Now to the onions, we're just gonna pop in the garlic. Just, I usually cut the, because I've got finely diced onions, uh, and I just want to soften them slightly. I'll add the garlic a little later, just because it tends to darken a little bit. I've got those big pieces of garlic too, that'll be part of the texture of the ratatouille as well. So we're just gonna cut those down. Once you've got all that aroma from the garlic and the onions coming in, I'm just over kind of a medium high heat right now. And I'm just, let me cook away. I've got a saute pan because then I can toss it. I don't need really a wooden spoon, but if you, don't feel uncomfortable tossing it, just use a, a wooden spoon. I'm going to put in my squash. Just chopped up butternut squash and acorn squash. I'm going to toss that right into. So this is going to have to cook away. This is raw squash that's going in there. I'm going to turn that down just ever so slightly. And we'll just let that cook away. Now, you don't have to put eggplant in. I'm going to put a little bit of eggplant in. I like eggplant. If you've got a small eggplant, you actually don't have to salt it. So there's this thing about the large Western eggplants tend to be a little bit bitter. And when they're a little bit bitter, you tend to sprinkle with salt, let some of the bitter juices come out. But when they're small, you'll find that uh, they're quite nice to put straight into the dish. So I'm going to use the eggplant. This would be a Mediterranean kind of uh, dish because you've got the eggplant. I'm going to pop that in and I want this eggplant just to almost disappear into the dish. So if you like eggplant, put it in. If you don't like eggplant, obviously, you don't have to put it in. It's got quite a few ingredients in. But remember, you're making a vegetable dish to please different people here. So you want to get lots of flavor. And so that's the eggplant. Pop it in. Okay, get rid of that. On the stove. Next of all is a zucchini. We're going to add a little zucchini. And the zucchini, I'm just going to use half a zucchini for this. Again, a zucchini, nutritionally wise, nutrition wise, isn't as good as a lot of the other vegetables, but it does pick up lots and lots of flavor. So you'll find that it'll pick up all the flavors from uh, everything that you've got in your dish. I'm going to cut it quite small again. These pieces can be put in, but if you want nice, big, chunky pieces, but remember, I'm putting this into a sweet potato at the end. I'm, I'm not going to cook it now because ratatouille is excellent to serve cold as well. So you can make it and serve it cold. Now you want to pull a lot of these flavors together. The other dish that you can put in, or the other ingredient that you can put in here is mushroom. And I think I said before that all you have to do with nice mushrooms is take a damp cloth and wipe the outside. If you've got wild mushrooms, sometimes you really have to clean them well just to get any kind of little debris out there. So we're going to put the mushrooms in. Now all these flavors should come together. Now, if you cook this, let them all cook down. You see this will cook down to probably, I'm going to say, at two thirds of its size. So the, the way it is now, it's going to cook down even more. The mushrooms are going to shrink. Everything's going to shrink a little bit. So you're going to get very intense flavor from all these different vegetables. Now you can use a little bit of tomato puree. Tomato puree is excellent. If you use a little touch of tomato puree, a tablespoon of tomato puree, then use a little touch of sugar. I usually put a little bit of sugar in there to sweeten it. But obviously we've already said that fat, sugar and salt are the big, uh, do the most damage to diets in Canada. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Roma tomatoes, and we're just gonna take a couple of Roma tomatoes. I'm just gonna nip off the ends there. And in this case, we would normally, for a ratatouille, you might make a, uh, what's called a tomato con casse. Put it in boiling water, take the skins off. In this particular case, I'm just gonna cut them whole, let the tomatoes disappear, into the dish. And if you don't mind things like little skins and things like that, I don't, uh, then it's kind of got a nice rustic feel to it. So the tomatoes will start to break down into the dish as well. 
and that's what we want. We want these tomatoes to start to break down. And I'm fortunate that in Thunder Bay we have a very good Italian community and we have a tendency to uh, get uh, home canned tomatoes. So we buy Roma tomatoes, we can them and we have them all the year. Well, that's how we get our pasta sauce, especially when you're in the south and in Calabria. Talk to anybody that's uh, from Calabria, they're making their own uh, canned tomatoes in the fall. So we're going to put our tomatoes in, which is also going to help bring everything together. Now, if you don't have an Italian friend that can give you your tomatoes, then all you have to do is just take some canned tomato juice, if you want to put a little juice. I recommend a little bit of juice because it's going to bring all those flavors together. So as we get those flavors together, as long as you can keep tossing it, you want this all to start to break down, cook and break down. We're also going to add a little bit of fresh basil because we've got tomatoes in there. So fresh basil is excellent. And we're going to add a little bit now. We could add a little bit at the end just for nice fresh flavor. We're also going to add a little touch of parsley. You can put a bay leaf in there. And we're going to season it. Instead of using salt, we're going to take a little bit of uh, lemon juice. And what I would recommend is some fresh ground pepper, but also a little bit of zest. And I think I mentioned it in a couple of shows now that you can actually take off the white pith that's underneath, this white part that you don't want, take it off, scrape it, don't get any of that uh, white part on, and then just take the yellow zest, cut it very, very small, and pop it right into your squash ratatouille. So remember, we've got lots of ingredients in here. You don't have to use all those ingredients. You can use all or some, but you're gonna find that this is gonna break down and give you this wonderful Mediterranean stew. And what I'm gonna try and do is scoop it into the uh, sweet potato. I'm gonna cook it a little bit later, the sweet potato, and just warm up my ratatouille once it's cold. You can put peppers in too. Peppers are excellent. So peppers, uh, and in this case, green peppers are good. We're gonna add a little bit of color because we have a lot of different colors in there. Remember, the brighter the vegetables, the more vitamins they have. So we're gonna put this green pepper in. And I think I've talked before about red peppers, how much I like red peppers, how good they are for you. Um, so we're gonna take the seeds out and do the same thing. We're just going to add nice pieces of red pepper. So now you can see this, but you don't want it to be um, too firm. You want this entire dish to cook down and you'll see that those juices from the vegetables will come out, but also that little bit of tomato that we put in should bring everything together. So we're gonna just get everything there. We've got basil in there. We've got lots of different flavor. And now we're actually gonna cook it for quite a while till all those flavors break down. And this idea about stuffing it into a sweet potato comes from England. They started making baked potatoes and then stuffing them with all kinds of things as, uh, as a street food. So they would take, it would be like a hot dog stand, but they would make baked potatoes and they would split them open, put baked beans in sometimes, cottage cheese in sometimes, but you could actually pick your own filling many times. So this is a nice fresh ratatouille and they've got a nice sweet potato. So kind of uh, a little bit of a twist on a, a British uh, thing right there. So, allergies. This one is a pretty safe dish. You've got nothing really in there that, well, none of the eight that I mentioned. Uh, you'll find that they, uh, that the eight allergies that you've got, the main allergies, things like nuts, milk, uh, egg whites, uh, when you get into uh, shellfish. So none of this will interfere with that, but you can actually make a beautiful vegetarian meal by just roasting the sweet potato, cutting it, cutting it out. I usually scoop it out just a little bit and then putting some nice fresh ratatouille in it. And I love a meal like that. You don't miss the meat protein in there. It's just all in the vegetables itself. And I'm not really sure where all these allergies came from, 
Uh, these allergies have been, uh, I mean, the diagnosed now, people have these allergies. Uh, I remember years ago when I worked at the Savoy Hotel, we had a banquet for 700 people. And on that 700 people, uh, I was a, what was classed as a comedy cuisine at that time. And as a comedy cuisine, all I had to do was just run around. But I remember on that particular day, uh, 700 people, a royal gal of all, and all we had on there was two special meals. And the two special meals were kosher meals. They had to be prepared in a separate, in a separate location, in a separate kitchen. Couldn't be prepared in the normal kitchen. So what we do, what we did, fast forward now to, uh, you know, quite a few years later, um, and you know we start looking at what's happened and how things have been diagnosed and how many people have these allergies. Could be many, many reasons, I'm not sure. Um, then I did a banquet for 200 people and there was 20 people with allergies and intolerances on for 20 people. So we know that allergies and intolerances have become a major issue in, uh, in food. And I think that when you have a big group coming around or you're preparing for a big group and you can be preparing quite a, a lot of food, then I would stay on the safe side. Avoid any kind of nuts. Avoid, obviously, peanuts. We're not, we're not using peanuts anyway. But um, even some wheat products, you know, can cause problems. Otherwise, you do end up preparing special meals on the side to please those people. This dish now, I'm going to let it cook down, but you can see that it's already started to cook down. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Pepper's always good. You could add a little touch of lemon juice if you wanted a little touch of lemon juice in there, but don't be scared and go easy. You can go wild on things like thyme, basil, any kind of fresh herbs. This dish cries out for fresh herbs. And anything you can do to bring out the flavor of those vegetables, even a little touch of mustard you can put in there, a little Dijon mustard, whole grain mustard, is fabulous. And then that dish, then, is all you actually need. And I'll take a sweet potato, cut it in half, scoop it out, and put some of this nice, fresh ratatouille around. And if you were, and if you were making it for yourself, and just making it for a couple of people, don't have allergies, you can put some Parmesan cheese on, uh, you know, obviously, obviously it's a dairy product, but Parmesan cheese on, gratinate it with a ratatouille and a nice sweet potato. Anyway, that's it for this week. I'll see you again next week on Healthy Cooking.